This is the story of Fuzzy Bum and her miraculous recovery, and hopefully how you can help. Say hi! <laughs> Look, you're on camera! January 12th, 2014. I just got back from my grandparents' house, and the chickens were making a lot of noise. I knew something was wrong. I opened up the chicken house door, not knowing what to expect. There were a bunch of chickens huddled in a corner together and they were surrounding one chicken. I moved them all out of the way so I could see what was wrong and I saw blood all over the wall. And then I saw the chicken. She was so beat up, I couldn't recognize who she was. It was only until later I realized it was Fuzzy Bun. All I remember next is that I started screaming. I started screaming for help. I did not know what to do. So I picked her up and her head was so bloody that the blood went all over my coat but at that point I really didn't care and I still don't care now, it's just a coat. Thankfully we still had some snow left so I could look for tracks in the snow and I saw big dog footprints. So I went back inside the house and I could not believe she was the same chicken that she was before. She looked nothing like herself. Her head was all swollen. Her eyes were even swollen shut. She had so much blood on her face. Her beak kept on opening and closing as if she was gasping for air. Well, what was left of her beak caught all of those sharp, sharp edges. I didn't know what to do other than to cry. But I wasn't feeling bad for myself. I, I couldn't even imagine how she must have felt. I read somewhere that a chicken, their beak getting cut off, is the same as one of our arms just getting cut off. She even had a hole through her ear that went right into, into her head. And I, I told her, I said, you can let go, it's okay. But thankfully, she didn't listen to me. She's, she's a fighter. And I was really, really worried about the first night, what would happen. I was praying, not necessarily that she survived, but that God's will would be done and that she wouldn't be in any pain anymore. And the next morning, I woke up, and I, I didn't know what to expect. I really didn't. I saw her. She was still alive. And at that moment, I had a sense of peace and comfort. I knew that God was going to look after her. I knew that he was going to bring her through this. He got her through the first night. I knew that he was going to be with her the rest of the way. I was fighting for her. I didn't know what to do. I had no clue. So I did what, what I thought would be best. And BackyardChickens.com. Amazing website. Check it out bunch of chicken experts, people who own chickens, so I wrote a message with pictures of her saying what happened and basically help, what do I do? There are so many people, so many helpful people responded and 9 out of their 10 comments said you have to tube feed her. You have to tube feed her otherwise she won't live. I didn't want to believe them. I, I, I wanted to believe that there's some other way to help her. <laughs> I, did, I have no clue how to tube feed a chicken. And I was terrified out of my mind. But a couple days went by and she still couldn't eat. Her eyes were swollen shut. She couldn't see. So I knew that I had to do something. So I asked them many, many questions on the website. And they told me the supplies that I needed. So my dad picked up um, a fish air, air hose tube and a syringe as well as um, KT, it's a bird formula. So we mixed that up and I had no clue how to tube feed her because there's two different holes that the tube can go through. The one leads to the lungs and if I got it down there, she would die. If I got it down the right tube that led to her crop, which is kind of like her stomach, then she would live. And I was praying, I was like, God, please, please help me. I, I don't know what to do. So. The people on the website, they were phenomenal, helping me in every way that they could. So I got a flashlight, my mom opened up her beak, my dad held her, and I was going to put the tube down. And there was one opening, it had two flaps on either side, kept on opening, closing, opening, closing. Of course that was the first tube that I tried to put the tube down, but it, it didn't really work. So I was like, okay, maybe that's not the right tube. So then I put it farther beyond and it went down a bit farther and then I pushed it in. And I was like, okay, I hope that was the right tube. And she, she, Fuzzy Bum behaved amazing. 
and that after we tube fed her, she was acting a bit strange. She kept on propping her head up like that all around. I was like, what's wrong, girl? What's wrong? And all of a sudden, she froze. What happened next? An egg popped out. Well, I was not expecting that, but I guess that was a good sign for me, saying, okay, I got it down the right hole. So I was um, happy with that. So, <laughs> and now we narrowed the tube feeding down to once a day, every night, and it takes about five minutes. So we're very fast with it now. And in the morning, since now both of her eyes are opened up, in the morning we feed her scrambled eggs with her food mixed into it. She loves that. Her other favorite food is bread. She loves bread and buns and any type of stuff like that. So the purpose of this video is hopefully someone will see this who's able to help Fuzzy Bum. Maybe they see the video and say, well, I'm not exactly sure if there's something I could do, but I could sure give it a try. That would be awesome. I would be so, so happy, and I'm sure that Fuzzy Bum would be so happy and grateful as well. I'm not sure if it's maybe using another chicken's um, beak or pieces of fingernail or something like that that could help her pick up pieces of food by herself. She, she doesn't have a top beak, she only has a little piece of her bottom beak left and she, she sees little pieces of corn and oats on the ground and she looks at it and she wants to eat it and she makes these cute little clucky noises like cluck 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 like I want to eat that but she can't and it's so sad and it's almost like she's giving up trying to eat on her own which is not good. God can do anything he wants if it is his will and you pray about it. He will make it happen. He performs so many miracles and I'm so glad that I got to witness one myself. If you're wondering how you can help, you can click share, like, share it with all your friends, everyone you know, that would be awesome. And as well, please continue to keep Fuzzy Bum in your prayers. Prayer works. I am 100% sure it does. Thank you so much. Say thank you. You're so pretty. Say thank you. Bye. Let me explain why her name is Fuzzy Bum. I'm technically not allowed to name the chickens because when I name them I get attached to them and then my parents, I don't let them butcher them. So the rule was that I wasn't allowed to name any other chickens. But I became so attached to this one chicken because she was so sweet. But I didn't want to give her a name. So I kind of gave her a nickname. It's kind of temporary, but it kind of lasted. She had the fuzziest bum feathers. I know that might sound crazy, but it, there, she was so fluffy. So that's why her name is Fuzzy Bum, in case you were wondering. And I'd also like to um, say thank you. Thank you, God, for answering my prayers. And also thank you to everyone on BackyardChickens.com. Your advice is amazing, and I couldn't have done it without you. So thank you very, very much. And as well, I'd like to thank my parents for putting up with this for, it's been around three months now, maybe approximately, for helping me every single night to tube feed her. You guys are amazing. So I'd like to thank you all very, very much. May God bless you all.